Namaste. For some time we have been posting videos based on uh, the words of Vedanta in Hindi. So it was our it was the suggestion of some people that we would also uh, post these videos in English so that uh, the English speaking audiences and our members uh, worldwide can also uh, learn these words and uh, practice them. So the word that we would bring today is yoga. Yoga is a Sanskrit word which has come from a root word yuja. Yuja means to engage, to acquire, uh, to use, to join, uh, uh, to organize, to uh, beautify these uh, you know these are the various uh, meanings of yuja so this yuja word when mixed when attached to three uh, suffixes they gave the word yoga so you know because they were attached with three suffixes they have three meanings of yoga so the first meaning of yoga is samadhi the second meaning of yoga is to join or to unite and the third meaning of yoga is to uh, uh, to discipline to uh, restrain so what is samadhi samadhi uh, like we we all know that uh, we are we experience three states in our day-to-day -day life one is conscious one is subconscious that is dreaming state and the third is unconscious that is deep sleep so this is, you know, the, in these three states, uh, our life goes on and we are not aware about any other state. But there is another state called the state of super consciousness or Samadhi, which is also termed as Turiya in uh, Vedanta and Yogic, uh, you know, uh, in Vedanta and Yoga. So what is this Samadhi? Samadhi is a state where I come, you know, where I become one with uh, the self. Or I want I become one with that supreme consciousness or universal consciousness like I am an individual soul so when I get connected and become one with that universal soul that is you know that state is called the state of Samadhi so this is the first meaning of yoga the second meaning of yoga is to unite to integrate like we have three you know three things one is the body the, the next one is mind and the third is our self so you know there is the uh, there is a deficiency of balance there's a definition deficiency of balance you know there's an imbalance in the energies of these three like the body has got a certain uh, certain energy the mind also vibrates in a different level of consciousness and the self you know it has got a different level of consciousness so there is an imbalance so you know the goal of life the goal of life or the goal of yoga is to find a balance where we can integrate between you know the uh, the body the mind and the intellect and and and, and, the, and the self so the uh, the state where this integration happens is also called yoga like you know uh, uh, in the bhagavad gita in uh, uh, in one place uh, krishna says that Dehino asmin yatha dehe komaram jovanam jara tatha dehantar prapti dhira statra namujjati. Now, here it talks about two entities one is the dehi, that is uh, the one who is residing inside the body, and deha, that is the body. So, they are the two people, you know. So, he says that, uh, you know, uh, all the transformations, all the changes, it happens in the domain of. Uh, of deha that is in the uh, physical it's it's having happening in the physical realm so it's happening with the physical body but the cosmic body or the cosmic self it does not change there is no you know modification there is no modification there is there is no change there's no trans transformation It's the same so you know uh, so to unite these three into one is also called samadhi samadha vachala buddhistada Yogam Abhavsasi. You know, in one part, Krishna says that the mind, you know, becomes one with the self, and that state is called the state of Samadhi. So, uh, this is the second meaning of uh, yoga. And the third meaning of yoga is to restrain, to discipline. Like 
<clears throat> we know about the eight limbs of yoga that is ashtanga yoga given by patanjali yama niyama asana uh, you know yama niva, niyama asana pranayam pratyahar dharana dhyana and samadhi so these are the eight limbs of yoga so these eight limbs are actually the uh, you know the various disciplines various disciplines by which you know by practicing which we we attain the state of yoga that is the last state is called samadhi so that is the state of yoga so here yoga means uh, you know restraint yoga means uh, 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 yoga means you know a discipline also yoga means path that is you know if you see that we know a uh, jnana yoga bhakti yoga karma yoga raja yoga so what are the, what is this yoga jnana yoga means what we attain the state of yoga through knowledge that is called jnana yoga bhakti yoga we attain the state of yoga unification of the you know with the with the supreme self by bhakti or devotion then karma yoga we attain the you know state of supreme self we unite with the supreme self through karma or through selfless karma nishkam karma you know the selfless work karma so that is called karma yoga and raja yoga through this pranayama and all these you know different yogic yogic processes we attain the state of yoga so that is uh, you know raja yoga so uh, in one way yoga also is uh, you know is a, is a, is a way by which we can uh, attain the, uh, the we can attain the supreme self or the goal of our life now you know in there is this uh, uh, ashtanga yoga that is that there is a yoga sutra we know that patanjali has given yoga sutra so the second sutra the second aphorism of patanjali yoga sutra is yoga chitta vritti nirodha that is yoga means when the you know when the thoughts when the thoughts are in the state of you know halt when my whole thought process comes to a halt that state is called yoga so that is also yoga according to patanjali yoga when your you know when your thought process means your mind is is the is a compilation of all these thoughts so when my thought processes stops means when uh, you know the, when my mind stops when my mind stops then i attain the state of yoga according to patanjali yoga sutra so there is a difference of you know of opinion between you know yoga and vedantic way of uh, understanding of yoga like here patanjali says that when the mind stops working that is the state of yoga it's called nirodha you know when it stops working but vedanta does not uh, you know does not consider nirodha to be the uh, to be the uh, to be the uh, to be the uh, uh, to be the ultimate you know ultimate uh, goal where a yoga is is attained vedanta talks about complete dissolution complete destruction complete elimination of mind like you know when the mind is completely eliminated this means not only mind mind intellect ego when these are completely eliminated then you know the knowledge appears then uh, the state of yoga is attained so there is a difference you know between the yoga which is explained or which is interpreted in in patanjali yoga and the yoga which is you know interpreted in vedanta now there are other you know other ways also by which krishna you know uh, lord krishna had explained yoga in in one in in you know in one of the verses he explains yoga as the you know means of life like we have needs in our life like food shelter and clothing these are our, these are our basic needs then we have other needs like we need money we need uh, you know better food we need uh, you know education we need to travel we need to do this we need to do that so you know there are you know these are the means of life so krishna says that you know yoga also is a means of life like in the ninth chapter he says ananas chintayanto mam ye jana paryu pasate tesham nitta vijuktanam yoga kshemam baham maham 
He says that a person who is, you know, united with me in such a way that he, he, he considers me to be himself. He does not have, you know, he does not consider me to be separate from him. He always, you know, he always considers me to be a part of him, not only a part of him, to, to be his self. Like he's so close to me. These people, these people who, you know, worship me in such a way that I am a part of them. I am their soul. I am their God. I am their heart. I am their heart and soul. So the people who do this, they are always united with me. They are always united with me and I carry, I carry with me their yoga and I protect them. Now here yoga means the means of life. That is food, shelter, clothing, money, you know, education, whatever you need. So he 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 does not give it. He is carrying that, uh, you know, he is carrying it for the devotees and he is protecting them also. So here yoga does not mean attaining the state of super consciousness. Here yoga means that, you know, attaining the means of our life. So, but this is another way of uh, looking into yoga. And also Krishna had interpreted yoga in various ways to make people understand so that people can attain the state of yoga. Like he said that Samatvam hi yoga uchyate. He said, you know, when you are, you know, when you have attained equanimity, when you consider everything to be equal, like, you know, we, we have a good and bad, profit and loss, success and failure, happiness and sorrow. These are these are the you know these are the different shades of life these are something which we all come across in our life so he says that when you have you have completely the same kind of attitude in both these contradictions like profit and loss good bad these are the contradictions the pair of opposites so when you, when you are when you have the same feelings when you have the same approach when you can accept both as the same you know then you have attained the state of yoga. Samatvam hi yoga uchate. When you, you know, attain the state of equanimity, that is, the, uh, that is called yoga. And also, you know, he had, he had explained yoga in a very, very revolutionary way. In a very revolutionary way, he said that yoga karmashu kaushalam. Kaushalam means skill. Karmashu means to do this karma, you know. So, the skill of karma is also yoga. So when you have attained the skill of karma, then you have attained yoga. Now, what is the skill of karma? Like we all, you know, we all uh, perform karmas. We all perform actions. Now we perform actions being the performer or being the doer. So a person who can perform or, or a person who can, you know, uh, perform these actions by knowing that he is not the doer is a skilled doer is a skilled you know uh, performer so for him that is yoga yoga karma shukoshalam when you have attained the state of you know skillfulness the state of skillfulness in your actions so how can i attain skillfulness in my action when i know or when i have when i have established into that fact that i am not the doer so that is being skillful and that is yoga. So, uh, you know, that's what we have for today. So tomorrow we'll come with a new word. And until then, Hare Krishna.